Assassin's Creed Unity is a stealth action RPG released on PC, Xbox One, and PS4 back in 2014. Many remember Unity as Assassin's Creed at its worst, due to a multitude of controversies, most of which having to do with bugs and other technical issues. But I'm sure you've seen all the memes. I was among the few, however, who saw the good in this game, even back then, to the point that it was one of my favorite entries in the series. With five years having come and gone since I last played, though, it's time to see if Unity deserves to be revisited, or if it's better left remembered in our nightmares. <laughs> Something that a lot of you may not know, unless if you watch the podcast, of course, is that in high school, Assassin's Creed was my favorite franchise. I loved the history, the conspiracy, the action, the theory crafting, good times. So naturally, when I started playing Unity again at the beginning of May, I saw in my Uplay library the games that I so fondly remembered, and then the ones that I never got around to playing, and wouldn't you know it, by the end of the night, I had re-downloaded Assassin's Creed 2, and also Rogue, Origins, and Odyssey for the first time to play off stream. My deep dive back into the Animus made me realize that in addition to the question of whether or not Unity is forward compatible, this review also needed to answer another question that's a little more complicated. Why this game? So, with today's agenda set and the obligatory disclaimer out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Like, why is this dude talking to me? I don't speak French. I'll make this first part quick, because some of you are likely hinging Unity's forward compatibility on how bad it is in terms of glitchiness. During the 40 hours I spent in the game on PC, both in story and a good amount of side activities, I only experienced one glitch that I would consider out of the ordinary category of bugs and glitches one might experience in other open world RPGs. And before you comment on how things were different at launch, the majority of my PS4 playthrough was during launch week, and even then the only bug I experienced was that the game crashed when I countered with one specific spear, which was super weird, but I digress. Unity was never as broken as many would have you believe. So, unless if you have a legitimate reason based on your own personal experience, leave those trash game comments at the door. Moving on, Assassin's Creed Unity takes place in late 1700s France, and we play as Arno Dorian, who tragically loses his father at a young age, fights crime from the rooftops with a variety of gadgets, is a bit of a detective, and has a tendency to fall in love with the enemy. So he's Batman. We play as a French Revolution Batman. Is this game forward compatible? Why, yes it is. Thanks for watching. The story follows Arno during the French Revolution as he finds himself following in his father's footsteps by joining the assassins to investigate the Templar Order. Throw in some conspiracies set to the backdrop of an iconic place in time and history and a cameo here and there, and boom, you've got an Assassin's Creed game. Speaking of the setting, Paris is rightfully one of the aspects of Unity that most people agree to be a strength. Many iconic landmarks like the Notre Dame Cathedral were recreated with impressive detail, and the large number of NPCs on screen do an excellent job of making Paris feel lived in, with them even playing a part in visual storytelling as civil unrest escalates alongside the story, as well as aiding in the usual social stealth elements that were a staple for the series. And traversing Paris feels great too. Oh, pardon me, madam. <laughs> Climbing and parkour have always been part of being an assassin, but with the addition of controlled ascent and descent, it's never felt smoother than it does here, and that includes titles that came after. Unity definitely plays like many of the Assassin's Creed games that came before it, while trying to elevate those core concepts to the new generation, especially in its approach to customizing Arno. As you progress in the story, Arno gains access to new abilities and tools. Arno's gear, though, is where things get interesting. You can change which individual pieces to wear, each of which directly affects a certain aspect of Arno's skill set. For example, belts are the primary means of carrying more tools, so a playstyle that emphasizes range would want a belt that increases ammo count, amongst some other things, while someone more geared towards stealth would equip one with more lockpicks or smoke bombs. It's a smart way to make players specialize a bit without limiting their skill set, and with all the different weapons to choose from, a ton of my time was spent piecing together the playstyle of my Arno, and had me excited to try the co-op missions later on, but we'll get to that. I got him, thanks though. Unity certainly raised the bar on character customization, but is the gameplay quite as strong? Honestly, I still stand by the belief that this was the best Assassin's Creed had ever been in terms of ideas it tried to implement. Stealth, for example, received what can only be described as a true innovation. Are you ready? Are you sitting down? Okay, watch closely. Truly magnificent. 
In all seriousness, while Assassin's Creed calls itself a stealth action series, the stealth aspect has always been more geared towards social stealth and hiding in plain sight. In Unity, stealth goes beyond and feels more like traditional stealth, utilizing cover, line of sight, and last known locations so that staying hidden doesn't depend on set locations like hay bales or benches, which do remain an option. The result is a more satisfying means of lurking through missions, but maybe you're one of those hotshots who misses the days of Ezio being able to challenge all of Rome at once just so he could counterkill the world into oblivion. To you, I say, maybe just go play Brotherhood again. Unity takes a slower approach to its combat that feels slightly influenced by the Souls games, which were really blowing up at the time. Attacks can be slow, and parrying is now a means of creating an opening rather than a kill button. While this is probably a disappointment to some, I personally don't mind it. Removing the ability to insta-kill your way out of open combat really helped incentivize stealth and increases the value of the hidden blade. The parrying flowed in and out of animation smoothly, and the slower pace of attacks helped keep Arno grounded as a combatant visually. Unfortunately, some of the animations tended to be a bit off, specifically kill animations. As cool as they were, it's not so satisfying when my over-the-back spear-to-the-face move stabs the air adjacent to my target, but this is simply how it is for a lot of Assassin's Creed games. Okay, calm down, calm down, guy, calm down. Not you, RZ, this dude who was spazzing out. Where Unity's combat truly struggles, though, is in tight quarters or whenever the camera has its back against a wall, which happens somewhat frequently, but far from the majority. She does not seem okay with these advances. Get consent. That's an, or that's an order. The gadgets are heavily featured in Unity and where I spent most of my time. Various different types of bombs to provide escape, distraction, or damage from a distance, as well as guns, which I'll admit, I would tend to use as a crutch from time to time. But my favorite tool was the Phantom Blade, a wrist-mounted mini crossbow that could fire berserk darts in case I wanted to create some chaos. The variety of ways to approach gameplay is very much utilized in both story and co-op content. Many of the story missions are open-ended in their approach, offering additional objectives to create opportunities like distractions and additional routes. So, on the mission at the Notre Dame Cathedral, I managed to make my way to a confession booth and wait for my target to approach, just so that I could kill him mid-confession. However, if I wanted to go in guns blazing wearing full medieval plate armor, I could. I even tagged a target with a berserk dart just so I could watch him fight his own guards till he was left alone, ripe for the killing. What the hell are you doing, Arno? As far as the co-op is concerned, I did get to play some of the co-op, but not as much as I would have liked. The most I can say is that I connected to another player through matchmaking near instantly and experienced no connection issues with a couple different co-op partners. It was a ton of fun, and like I said, I wish I could have done more. Other initiates, assassins just like you, are doing their part to end this fight. If you need more training, more experience, you can call on them for help. But I don't have All any right. friends on PC. <laughs> Let's move on to story. I won't go too in depth with the narrative for the sake of time, so beware of minor spoilers ahead. The first time the game is launched, we are immediately met with something that feels like it's straight out of a movie theater, as the modern story presents itself through the lens of a home entertainment system called Helix. We play as, well, ourselves, technically, using the Helix to experience history through Animus technology. We are taken to the Helix menu, which looks just convincing enough to make you think that it's a real thing, and after playing the only unlocked level, our feed is interrupted by a woman named Bishop. She's an assassin, and she needs our help sifting through Arna's memories to find a key figure's remains before the Templars do. And that's basically it for the modern side of things. We observe Arno's memories as a child on the day of his father's death, when he meets a young girl named Elise, with whom he causes some trouble with. Bet you can't steal one. Bad influence. How do, how do I steal? Upon witnessing his father's death, Arno is taken in and raised by Elise's father, Francois de la Serre. Skip ahead to Arno as an adult, and through indirect cause of his own, he's framed for the murder of Francois. When detained in the Bastille, Arno meets a man named Belek, who's the kind of guy who gives everybody the exact same nickname. Where'd you come by this, piss pot? Piss pot. Piss pot. Goodbye, piss pot! Belek is an assassin, and he knew Arno's father. They break out together, and after learning that Elise and her father were both Templars, Arno joins the assassin, and from that point on, it's a somewhat typical Assassin's Creed story of Templars doing bad and our hero trying to put a stop to it, probably playing a background role in history along the way. There are some crucial things that set Unity apart in its story, though. 
For example, the Brotherhood in Paris operates outside of just Arno. He is one of many, and getting to see the inner workings of the assassins from the perspective of someone I think was lower on the totem pole was really interesting. Another and way more obvious quality is that a large part of Unity's DNA is the love story of Arno and Elise. They were fun characters to watch, and even with the contrast in their allegiance and beliefs, I wanted them to be together. You were always a bad influence. Oh, you were a worse one. I don't know about that. My dad literally died because you made me leave my chair. Arno, by the way, might just be my favorite assassin in the entire series. He's cunning and has a sharp wit, frequently reacting to situations with sarcasm, yet brash in moments where his emotions get the best of him. What drives him, though, is his moral compass. We first see this right before his father's death when he believes that guards are after him for stealing an apple. Elise tries to hide, but Arno immediately tries to confess to the passing guards. After his father's death, he somewhat seems to stop believing in the existence of a just world as we see him as a young adult, caught stealing back his father's watch. Well, in a just world, Victor, I would agree with you, but this is not a just world, <laughs> this is friends. <laughs> what initially started for him as a quest for redemption through joining the assassins, became a desire to bring justice upon those causing turmoil in France, with that side driving him more as his story progresses. Arno frequently butts heads with the Brotherhood, even finding himself in direct opposition to one of the Creed's more devout followers, which led him to see the flaws in fanaticism, even to the Creed. Unfortunately, Arno's story just ends before we get to see his character fully develop, which brings me to my final thoughts. You know why this is the best Assassin's Creed game? It's the only Assassin's Creed game where you can actually teabag people. In a long line of Assassin's Creed titles, why pick up Unity? Well, in my opinion, between where the series had been and where it is now, Unity was an excellent attempt at changing the series for the next generation, while keeping the spirit of the franchise completely intact. The modern segments were dialed back from the Desmond days, but I liked the idea of that portion of the game trying to play it off as real as it could, giving us a sort of meta experience. The combat was a bit slow, gameplay felt new with refined stealth and polished movement, and the inclusion of co-op, which we sadly haven't gotten since. Arno's story and character were well executed, and wouldn't have worked if the player was able to change who he was as a character through dialogue options or a branching story. Assassin's Creed Unity was the next step for the franchise that ended up abandoned largely because of glitches that the majority of players would never even see outside of YouTube and memes. And for that reason, even though it wasn't perfect and a lot of its concepts needed another game to really shine, it's my opinion that the overall concept of Assassin's Creed peaked here. Unfortunately, Ubisoft did what Ubisoft does and sacrificed the series at the first sign of weakness in order to turn it into another loot-based RPG, a Far Cry of its old self. Which, funny enough, they also did to Far Cry. But is Unity Forward compatible? I definitely enjoyed playing through it again, and for fans of older Assassin's Creed games, I'd say yes, it totally holds up. However, it definitely feels like a game trying to grow into the at-the-time new generation of gaming, so it does feel at times like it's attempting to fulfill a vision that would never be fully realized. If you don't mind some lack of polish and being forever left with the question of what could have been, give Unity a try. However, if you think Assassin's Creed is better now than ever, you probably won't be too impressed. Not to say Origins and Odyssey are bad games, quite the opposite. I enjoy them as RPGs. Still, here's to hoping that come November, Valhalla will bring the Creed back to its former glory.